Dr. Chu Hock Tan, um, A04, Learning pharmac Pharmacokinetics Through a Personalized Learning Approach. So we welcome you, Dr. Chu. Hello. Hi. Yes, we can hear you. Yes. Uh, okay. Uh, all right. My topic today is on uh, learning pharmacokinetics through a personalized learning approach. So uh, I am Dr. Tan Chu Ho. I'm from the Department of Pharmacology, uh, Faculty of Medicine. And uh, together with me uh, in the same team, we have Dr. Elsa Hanifa from the same department as well. Both of us are medical doctors uh, and also a, a PhD, uh, I mean, a pharmacologist. Okay. So uh, before I start uh, into the uh, learning uh, and teaching experience. I would like to just share a little bit about the topic of pharmacokinetics. Yeah, so uh, pharmacokinetics is basically the study of the fate of a drug or substance that enter the body of a living organism upon its administration. Now, in simple word, yeah, in layman term, is what your body does to the drug. Okay, so it is easy for I me mean, for most people to uh, understand that when you take a medicine or a drug, yeah, okay, a medicine, uh, you want the medicine to do something good to your body, which means if you have fever, it helps you to get rid of the fever. If you have infection, it helps you to overcome the infection. Okay, so that is what drug does to our body. But you may also want to remember that at the same time, your body will do something to the drug. Yeah? And this whole process is very complicated, very complex, and what we call it is pharmacokinetics. Okay? So uh, pharmacokinetics, therefore, it is a very important discipline or a knowledge uh, to be learned by future doctors, yeah, okay. So in medical curriculum throughout the world, pharmacokinetics is a must learn subject, all right? Because it is essential to make sure that these doctors to be, they will be able to use medicine in an effective and safe manner, yeah. So we are emphasizing on two things. Yeah, one is efficacy. So you want to make sure the medicine that's given to the patient is safe is effective yeah? and at the same time being safe as well. So the two very important components for the drug to be safe and also effective depends on knowledge about how to sort of play around with the drug. Yeah? So it includes what type of medication should be chosen and then the route of administration, whether you need to swallow it, you need an injection or something like that. And also the dosages as well, yeah, okay? Like children, what's the dosage? Pregnant woman, what's the dosage? Adult, old people, what kind of dosage is this? And it's not just like that. You have to also learn about the knowledge of uh, how to monitor whether the drug is being effective and being safe as well throughout the treatment, yeah? Okay, and added to that is that it has to be personalized, just like learning. So medicine, you have to personalize as well because each and every one of us is different. The dosage works for me may not be functional for you, yeah? or it can be actually dangerous for certain people. So personalized medicine is important. Now, uh, but when we look at how pharmacokinetics is taught in almost all medical curricula, now, it is usually taught, of course, start right from year one yeah, because it is very important. So we emphasize that we start that in year one when the students just came into the uh, medical school. But it is usually didactic method yeah, taught by lectures. And what I'm showing you here is some of the very typical uh, concept or typical uh, impression of people about pharmacokinetics. You have a lot, a lot, a lot of uh, models, mathematic, mathematical uh, models, a lot of equations, a lot of imagination is needed. And so what usually uh, the, uh, 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 the, the, the message that we got from people is that this is so hard. The student complained that it is so abstract. You know, from preschool or from uh, A-level or STPM or metrics, they get away from physics and chemistry. They thought of mathematics. They thought that, okay, fine, I like biology. So I was just, just dealing with all the tissues, the cells, animals or whatever. But 
when they see all these things, then they get very frightened of, yeah? And uh, especially we emphasize on the need to apply pharmacokinetics concept in clinical context, yeah? In clinical cases and so on. So that makes it very diffi difficult for the students. Therefore, we identify the problems, yeah? Through our uh, formal and informal feedback from the students that, uh, the problems with our recent, I mean, not recent, but throughout all these years, uh, pharmacokinetics uh, teaching is that we have very limited time yeah, for pharmacokinetics. Uh, there's only two hours lecture and one hour tutorial. Yeah, okay, so two hour lectures plus one hour tutorial, a total of three hours, but they need to learn something about life and death for a drug to be effective, for a drug to be safe. So they say it's not enough and there are so many abstracting for them to understand and imagine. And uh, even within the tutorial, okay, we usually try to give some of uh, something like problem solving session. We give them some questions to discuss and then we will try to uh, answer the, the queries and so on. But because it is only one hour and the question is a little bit not so well structured uh, in line with the clinical context, so they also complain that it is not so uh, useful for them. Yeah, okay. And uh, of course, there's also limited learning space. We have about 170 over students, medical students in year one. So it's uh, usually done in the big class kind of uh, 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 lecture and even tutorial also, we have to also sort of uh, like uh, uh, usually a big class as well. So that actually brings in the, a lot of uh, problems uh, when to help students to understand the topic. Therefore, we uh, think that uh, maybe we should use some innovation yeah, in teaching pharmacokinetics. We cannot rely on the usual typical didactic way. Uh, one of the ways that we think about is uh, instructional design or the ID approach, yeah, where it depends on the four elements where you have personalized learning by thoughtful instructional design which emphasize a lot of the digital citizenship. That's what everyone doing now, you know, that things go digital. And then uh, that will help to learn the learning to become more seamless. And then we add, make sure that the learners are well engaged and uh, the content also will be learner oriented. Yeah, and we together with assessment and feedback. Then of course, uh, the, 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 the assessment and feedback is important. And then we also bring in the ADDI model, yeah, which is uh, added, an analyze, design, develop, evaluate. And then uh, we, we, we what, one thing uh, flexible about this ID approach is that uh, we can usually we can assess and adjust the teaching anytime. Yeah? So it is not just confined to the so-called two hours lecture and one hour tutorial. We can actually help the students to facilitate their learning uh, throughout the cohort or throughout the year. Okay. So these are some uh, explanation which I've covered just now. And another uh, perspective that we would like to share is the social constructivist uh, theory. Uh, so this is when then um, you know the the the, the, the we, we 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 base it on the principles that knowledge is constructed to interactiveness, interactive human activity, yeah, and individuals create meaning through their interactions. And at this age of time, you know, with MCO or no MCO, actually social media and blog is the trend to go, and the use of a media like WordPress or whatever actually is um, not really that uh, expensive but they are good resources yeah, to be incorporated uh, to encourage uh, the, the, the students learning in a personalized way yeah, where you can actually include uh, various um, uh, um, uh, components like quizzes, videos, interactive graphics, and even forums, yeah, on online forums and discussion throughout the, 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 the flexible period of time for their learning. Okay. All right, so you will see that we actually use some, uh, we start small with the uh, use of WordPress as a platform to promote the knowledge networking among these students. And then uh, we slowly then add in uh, additional resources, include quizzes, videos, interactive graphics, etc., especially to help those who have difficulty in imagination, yeah? imagining all the mathematical models, the equations and so on and so forth.
Okay, so the aims basically is to incorporate personalized learning elements in the teaching of pharmacokinetics to our year one medical students. And uh, after that, we also try to assess the effectiveness uh, of the personalized uh, learning experience in improving the understanding of pharmacokinetics in our students. Now the methods basically our uh, we start with lecture two hours. Now you see that we still have lecture because we cannot get away with this. This is already in the structure uh, 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 our medical curriculum syllabus. Yeah. Okay. So uh, therefore uh, the lecture is still the same there. Then uh, we what what we did is we have a pretest after the lecture. The pretest takes in the form of uh, MCQ, yeah, two force uh, method, two uh, force uh, 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 statement, and uh, the student have to answer it in ten minutes. Okay, after the lecture, we do the pretest. The pretext consists of thirty five items to test on the uh, student's uh, uh, basic understanding about the principle. Okay, and then after that, we take that uh, results to reflect on, to look at, you know, what the domain or which area is their weakness. And then we modify our tutorial content accordingly. So we have tutorial for small group or small class uh, uh, teaching then. Uh, we call it PKCBL, which is basically means pharmacokinetic with clinical based learning components, like clinical or case based learning, yeah, clinical cases, uh, because as I said just now, students also say that they have difficulty to incorporate pharmacokinetics with clinical practice. So we bring in clinical based uh, cases into the tutorials to enrich the content. Yeah. So after that, we give them the feedback through the small group or small class of tutorials. And uh, further than after that, we have the pharmacokinetics e-learning web page. Uh, we are using WordPress at the moment. So we have put in a lot of uh, resources there that includes uh, uh, various videos, graphics, and also mini lectures and so on. And along with that, there's also quizzes and clinical application examples. Yeah? And then uh, in the, in, throughout the years, then uh, they, they have actually just uh, set, set for their final exam recently and we also take a, a post test yeah, a post test at that time to look at whether they, uh, they are able to get a better outcome or uh, improvement of the pharmacokinetics uh, 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 knowledge following this uh, so-called IP yeah, uh, uh, our personalized uh, 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 approach or personalized learning so just, a, just to share with you some of the things, the learning objective is like that. Uh, this is already fixed at the curriculum. We can't modify it, uh, but it's actually very intensive, very, very extensive and intensive. And uh, things like, you know, uh, self-directed learning, PBL and things like that may work to some extent, but without proper guidance and interactiveness uh, between the teachers and the students, they may go sesat, you know, <laughs> because it's so abstract. Yeah? So if they just do self-directed learning, very likely they will end up, you know, they lose their, 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 their correct uh, understanding. Yeah? So we have two uh, topics, I mean two lectures, and then the usual lectures is given. Then we have the pretest. okay. So the, the, the marks is 35, so the average is about 22, but there are almost that 40% or so falls below uh, uh, the passing, which we set at about uh, 18. Yeah? Okay, 18. So uh, we are thinking of how to improve this overall uh, understanding. Now, then we follow by the clinical case uh, based tutorial, as I said. So we actually divide them into small groups, 10 groups of them, instead of a whole big groups. And then we utilize all pharmacologists in the department, uh, assign one to take care of each group. Uh, and before that, we give concise briefing to all the tutors so they, are know, they know exactly how to do this approach. Then uh, we carry out the tutorial with continuous feedback. 
and this is the e-learning web page. Uh, um, you can assess this. This is how it looks like. But you will see that the, the various components in it, that's quite extensive. You have the glossary with the cartoons and so on to help them to grasp the understanding of the definition. And then we have the formulas, and then we have the videos, and uh, some block fig. And here, test yourself. We actually have some quizzes as well. So are the cases uh, that we put up there for their interactive learning. Uh, for example, this one is about uh, the use of uh, 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 the, the, met the, the root of administration, how to give an antibiotics and so on, uh, and how to monitor it, for example. Yeah? And then we have various cases, like for example, this is uh, uh, you know, why a certain medicine is uh, not working for certain patients and what would be the precaution taken to be taken in certain group of patients, for example, like uh, pregnancy and so on. Okay? Then we have other cases uh, which is which could be because of the gene different genetic profiles of the patients, therefore you need personalized medicines. Okay. So we also bring that into this uh, context, in the context of personalized learning. <laughs> okay, so quizzes, um, we have also set up quizzes in the, in the, in the website. So they can, students can go in and then they can do this to test the, the, the understanding of the topics throughout the years. Yeah? The quizzes, sometimes we, uh, we have update the quizzes, we have new qu quizzes and so on. And uh, the good thing about this is they can always contact us. Yeah, okay. Uh, and then we will give them the feedback immediately. Yeah, okay. So this is some feedback uh, from people. And we uh, recently also done the poll test. You can see that, uh, let me just show you this one. Okay, this is a comparison between the pre and post. Uh, it is obviously moved to the right, eh? okay? So which means there's an improvement in the overall, uh, what you could say that, the the, mini, the, the, the score, yeah? Okay, the, the average score actually improved. Um, but of course, we still have a, a little bit concerned about some of the students. They seem to be like fall below the par. Uh, we are actually getting them to come to us and then we will try to like, you know, find out okay, what is their problems at this stage? They are still not very sure about certain topics under uh, pharmacokinetics. And then we will try to do a, a, even a micro personalized kind of uh, 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 guidance to these students. So I think this will help us to pick up also like what students may need further uh, 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 further treatment, not to say treatment, but further uh, help, yeah? okay, guidance beyond this level. Okay, so in conclusion, um, Again, pharmacokinetics is important topics for all doctors, but it is very abstract and it is difficult. Yeah, okay. So a personalized learning approach, therefore, is very much needed. Uh, we retain lecture, despite many people say, oh, let's just do PBL or SDL and so on, but lecture, we still need it, but we need innovations, okay? So the innovations that we brought in uh, to considering that, you know, students have difficulty uh, individually to understand pharmacokinetics is that we try to give them uh, 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 good tutorials, small group tutorials, and then where we emphasis on this, put on the clinical cases, the clinical applications, and then we also establish uh, the e-learning platform. So uh, with a lot of uh, videos, e-lectures, and then quizzes, case discussion application, YK forum, and so on, we put that all in, okay? And then uh, along with this, we monitor with the pre and post test, and then the continuous feedback and so on. So at the moment, of course, the data is still coming in, and then we're still analyzing, uh, but the outcome seems to be encouraging. And I think this will be a promising approach to continue in teaching pharmacokinetics to medical students in the following cohorts. Yeah. So with that, uh, I would like to thank you and a special acknowledgement to UM, uh, the UM Lighter Grant, to ADAPT, to our faculty, Vaxxon, all start from Department of Pharmacology, uh, and then MERDU, which is a medical education uh, center in our university, uh, in our faculty, and definitely all the students. This is a pilot batch of what we're trying, uh, but uh, we, we, are, we will be using the, or applying this method in the following cohort as well. Okay, with that, thank you very much. Thank you so much, Dr. Tan. Thanks. Thank you.